Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verba Noun. Today we're talking to Jeffrey Marsh from the Eponemius YouTube channel, Eponemius meaning the same name, Jeffrey Marsh, but he also has a presence on Vine, which is really cool because he uses both of these media to put out just positive affirmations of, you know, who you are, that who you are may be different from other people, and that's okay. Now, some people may think, well, but Peter, where's the, where's the educational value in this? And to those people, I would say, look at your local high school, look at your college, look at your elementary school. If you look there, you will see people like guidance counselors. And if that's not a good example, look at public television, look at Mr. Rogers. Letting people know that who they are is okay and valuable, you know, to be loved, that is absolutely important. Because when you value who you are, it makes it a lot easier to focus on things like learning, for example. And so I wanted to talk to him and get his perspective because I think in this narrative of online education, I think what he does is just as important as teaching math or science or art or history or anything like that. So let's take a peek. My name is Jeffrey Marsh and I'm a Vine star, sort of. That is good, <laughs> good enough. Why do you do what you do? There are lots, well, there are two answers to that question. And one is practical, that I tried a lot of other ways to reach people. And one of the most fulfilling actually was live performance and did concerts and cabarets and that sort of thing for a long time. But that's not, I've, I've, that's not where I belong. And we can talk more about that. But the, so there's the practical reason that Vine was something I hadn't tried before to get the message out. And this is absolutely the first time that I've had such success with the main message. Love yourself, in, accept who you are, be yourself. That's always, always been the message. And this particular uh, framing of it on Vine is really, really convenient because they're six seconds long. So one single idea, sometimes one and a half, is about all you can put into a vine. And that to me, I mean, be yourself is as simple as it gets and is about six seconds long. So that's one, is that there's this practical idea that vine was uh, the method, the medium that clicked and that worked. And the other side of it is I make these videos for anybody who feels like an outsider, anyone who feels different. And in the beginning, it was specifically for gay kids or gender different kids, anybody in that sort of category or group, because often they feel like an outsider and like, I remember growing up and never knowing that you could become an adult and be healthy and happy and still express who you are as a gay person. So I wanted to fill that void for anybody else who was confused, not confused about who they are, but confused that society would treat them in such a horrible way. And so I decided to make videos for anybody that needed me. And the joke, the running joke, is I'm making videos for my past self, for my 11-year-old self. But that happens to benefit a lot of 11-year-olds, and sometimes 11-year-olds in adult bodies, too. Can you talk a little bit about being popular on Vine? Yeah, I'm very grateful for the following that I have, and every single day it's a total shock to me. There is intense hatred. I mean, there is on YouTube, too, right? But there is intense hatred on that app as well for people who are gay, queer, different. Uh, there, I'm sorry, go back. There is hatred for anybody on that app. I mean, you can look at any of the comments and see that. But there seems to be this extra special vile hatred. Maybe it's just reflective of culture in general, but this really, really intense hatred for people who are, well, carefully phrase this, intense hatred for men who are wearing dresses and wearing makeup. Which is another thing we can talk about, Peter, 
<laughs> that if it's the other way around and a woman is wearing pants, uh, people don't seem to care or notice, but if it's a man in a dress, there are more issues there. Certainly, women who dress like men get a lot of hatred if it's done in a certain way. But for some reason, and I think it's related to gender roles in society in general, if a man wants to imitate, imitate a woman, then they get quite a lot of hatred. And for what it's worth, it seems to be that there's an assumption that men are better and women are lesser. And if a man in a better position wants to imitate a woman in a lesser position, then anybody who's seeing that needs to react in a way that forces the man to change. And so it's a total shock to me, total shock to me, that as many people follow me and like my videos as, as do. I don't know if I will ever have a million followers on Vine. I think to get to that level, you need to do things that I'm not doing with my art. And I almost said not that I'm not willing to do with my art. But that's not necessarily the case. I mean, what is absolutely most popular is more comedy, more, uh, just more things that I don't do. So every single day when I get on and see that I have more followers than the day before, it's a shock and I have intense gratitude for that whole process. Okay. So <clears throat> after you got on the vine, and I actually, I looked at your YouTube videos and I noticed that you've been doing them for a while Indeed. as well. Did they start at the same time or did one That's start and the other one? Yeah. YouTube was my first try. My first try at sort of social media and made some videos that were popular, but nothing at all compared to Vine. The format of it, the intensity of it, the shortness of it, the brightness of it is uh, right up my alley. I love it. And I love making YouTube videos too, and we'll see where that goes. But they're two different sort of animals and they're, they're meant for two different things. What has surprised you about being on YouTube and Vine? Surprises? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as we discussed, having any followers at all is a surprise. Not that I don't, not that I don't value what I have to offer. I got talent, I got wisdom, life wisdom, and all that sort of thing. But it's unclear in our culture as it is right now that people will... What was unclear to me from the beginning is whether people will accept someone and hear what I have to say past the way I look. Can they, can they notice the way I look? And I do it for a reason, right? I do want people to notice it. But can they see the way I look and hear the message and hear what I have to say? The way I look, eyeshadow, dresses, all of that is intrinsic to the be yourself message because as far as I can tell, this is me. Uh, so I'm, uh, showing what it's like to be yourself, hopefully. And would people be able to get through what they've been taught, the inherent uh, biases, discrimination, that's part of culture, would they be able to see past that and be able to connect with me? And I'm very delighted to say that, yeah, it's happening every single day. All right, so that was part one. Now let's move on to part two, uh, where we're going to continue the talk. I just want to break it up. Uh, I almost kept it the same length, but because it was like at like 19 minutes, I feel like that's just right on the cusp of good taste. And I talked a little bit more in that intro than I meant to. So yeah, uh, get ready for part two. Link is going to be not here. It's going to be on the title screen. Ha, tricked you. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I'll stop that. Anyways, so yeah, whenever you're ready. Down below me, there is a link to the next part of this video. Go ahead and click it whenever you're ready. Or if you're watching this on autoplay, just let it do its thing. All right, go.